Gravitar was designed to be impossible to beat, and most of my brief memories from childhood of it came from putting in a quarter and seeing Game Over maybe 12 seconds later. When you first see the game, it might not make sense. There are several different screens, and it isn't exactly clear what you're supposed to be doing. It seems like you mostly careen into objects and crash, or get shot, or get pulled into the sun. However, the game was designed to be complex and a real challenge for early 80s arcade goers, who were well versed on asteroids and Lunar Lander. And those who spent the time to learn what it was about were rewarded with a game featuring strong strategy, high skill, and a sense of achievement that hit the mark and made it an all-time classic. The Atari 2600 port is an example of a game that tried to make the transition from vector graphics to television sets with mixed but overall positive results. The graphics are colorful, but the system doesn't have the fluid 360-degree granularity of the arcade, and the controls can be frustrating. I frequently found myself thrusting into walls instead of turning, and trying to refuel without crashing often failed. However, the core of the gameplay transitioned very well, and it feels very much like playing the arcade game. When you start, you're flying in a solar system, being dragged by gravity into the sun. You have two choices to get through the stage. Either fly into each planet and destroy the enemy bases there, and then fly out, or fly into a reactor, shoot the core, and escape in time. Neither is easy, but the reactor is intended to be more difficult. Each stage gets progressively harder, and once you destroy all of the planets, you go into another universe, where gravity and or visibility of either the planet or your enemies changes. The overworld is a simple blast and flying game, but each planet offers a tricky mix between a more punishing lunar lander and a merge of maybe asteroids in combat. You need to track your fuel, and you can refuel on each planet by carefully navigating to the rectangular fuel spots and pressing down on the stick. Down on the stick acts as a shield in the overworld. The 2600 version of the game is easier than the arcade, although it is still difficult in its default first game mode. However, the game offers various easier modes so you can practice. The modes toggle whether things fire at you, whether gravity works, and how many lives you start with. Just as with the other separately released Atari 2600 ROMs in the VCS store, there are no control settings for the most part. There are also no instructions. However, also like other released ROMs, the game is already available to all VCS owners for free in Atari Vault Volume 1, and there it offers extensive game, graphical, audio, and control settings, along with the original instructional manual. Perhaps play it there, unless you have a specific reason for the ROM. The arcade version is available on Antstream Arcade, but not the 2600 version. Thanks for watching. I'll have more videos in the coming weeks. Liking helps spread the word about the channel, and subscribing gets these videos in your feed. Have fun!